Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of Tabletop Simulator. My name is Kasanis. Guys, we are now going to move on to building the tokens for our games. We're going to take a look at two types of tokens, standing up figurines and tokens themselves. Alright everyone, let's get started. Okay, creating tokens is relatively simplistic. We're right back here where we left off. I've got myself my board, I've got myself my table, I've got myself my hands. I'm going to create those tokens now that we're going to use throughout the game. This is a four-player game. In this four-player game, players can search the long grass areas for additional Pokemon, capture those Pokemon, ultimately to fight the gym. That is their plan within this game. I need some way of indicating that a player has visited a long grass area. They can only capture one wild Pokemon in each of the long grass areas. Some type of token makes an excellent indicator that they've been there. So let's go ahead and create ourselves some tokens. I'm going to create four different types, four different stacks of tokens. A red, a blue, a yellow, and a green stack. Each of those will represent one of our players. We can have four players in this game. It doesn't necessarily represent the actual Pokemon they have, but theoretically, if they get themselves a fire Pokemon, they could be red. If they get themselves a grass Pokemon, they could be green, blue, and a yellow could be po a yellow could be uh, electric, and blue could be water. All right, so I'm just going to use those primary colors. In your case, whatever it is you want to do, whatever you're creating your tokens for, give it some thought and make sure that you've got a good token that represents what it's supposed to represent. Okay, so let's take a look at how we're actually going to create these tokens now. I'm going to go to Objects, I'm going to go to Components, and in this particular case, I'm uploading a custom component, a custom token. So I'm going to go to Token. Sorry, I'm going to go to Custom. <laughs> Under Custom, I've got several options. There's our board again, awesome. I'm going to use Token for mine, and I'm going to choose some spot, and I'm going to click. When I do so, it adds a token onto the board. I'm then going to right click to say that's it, I'm only going to create one token for now. Okay, so let's take a look at the token I'm going to create. I'm going to go to image and I'm going to choose the image that I want to add. In my particular case, I've created a Pokeball that represents the token or, or that is the token that represents a player has been to a particular area. So I'm going to scroll down until I find my Pokeball token and you'll note that my tokens are almost all PNGs. The PNG is going to allow me to ensure that my, that my background has been removed, that all of the alpha still exists. I'm choosing Poke Token, which is the one I want. I don't know why it says JPEG. It's, it's a PNG, not a JPEG. I'm going to say Select. And when I do, once again, Cloud or Local, in my case, I'm going to stay Local. If you guys are making a multiplayer game, make sure you make it Cloud. Local. All right. In doing so now, I have a couple more options. How thick is my token? What's the merge distance? So how close does it be before it'll actually merge with the, the other tokens? Uh, stand up, whether this can be put on its side. And stackable, whether or not these can be stacked together with other tokens. All right, so in this particular case, mine are stackable. So I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to say import. And when I do, in a couple of seconds, boom, there's my Pokeball. All right, awesome. Right now it's floating above the table. If I click it, it'll fall down to where I placed it. I can close off my window Ta-da! All right. Now, right now, this Pokeball is pretty huge, right? It covers up my entire grass area, and that's not what I want. I want each player to be able to put a representation that they visit an area within here. So I've got a couple things that's no good right now. My Pokeball looks like a Pokeball, but it's not currently set up to be a color, right? I don't know which player is associated with this ball, and uh, I, it's much too large to be able to fit into this grass area, especially if I have four players who've all visited the same areas. So... The first thing I'm going to do is shrink this ball down. We've already talked about this to make something larger or make something smaller. You can hover over and you can either use the plus or the minus key. In my case, I'm going to use the minus key and I'm going to make it smaller. That's probably pretty good right there. Let me just check it for size. Yeah, that doesn't look so bad. I can probably stack four of those kind of all together in this area. So I'm going to leave it like this. Now, the other thing I have to do is I have to set this up so that my player can easily identify that their token has been left on the board, right? So I'm going to tint this a certain color. Now, I have a choice. I could either make custom tokens for each player saying, this is yours, this is yours, and maybe they all look the same, but they're just slightly colored different. That's up to you. A much easier way, if I have the same token for all my players, is to color these tokens in some way. I'm going to right-click, and it's going to give me several different options. You can see that I've got here as an option a color tint. I'm going to click on color tint, 
and I'm going to choose a color for this object. In this case, let's say we're going to make our red tokens first, and I can choose whatever red I want. I'll just choose the super fire engine red. That's fine with me, and I'll apply it. You can see my token has now turned red. Awesome. Now, I could repeat those steps many, many times if I wanted to, or I could simply say copy, and then I can right-click once again anywhere, and I can say paste. And when I do, I'm going to paste a similar, this exact same token, a copy or a clone of that particular token. All right. In my case, each player has five Pokeballs. They can visit five of the long grass locations to add in a Poke, to capture a new Pokemon. They're going to need at least then five Pokeballs to put down here. All right. So there's my first two. I'm going to paste. I'm going to paste. I'm going to paste. That gives me five of these balls. I'm going to select them all and hit G to group them together. Awesome. If you want to, you can repeat those steps for each of your players. Absolutely do that if you'd like to. I'm going to go ahead now and copy these, make the entire stack for my red, blue, green, and yellow. I'll be right back. A few moments later. Okay, guys, I have my red, my green, and my yellow all completed here. Let me show you exactly what I did. You could, like I said, have gone through and copied those same steps to produce these over again. But instead, if you wish to go faster, you can select the entire stack. You can right-click and choose Copy. And once again, when I right-click and say Paste, I'm going to end up with the entire stack copied. Awesome. I'm now going to go over that stack, once again, hold to select all of them, and I'm going to right-click and change the color. So I'm going to color tint. In this case, I'm looking to create my blue ones. So let's go up here and choose a blue of some kind. Let's choose that blue. I'm going to apply it. Now, something you'll notice, they didn't change. All right, This is an error that's occurring within here, or maybe a bug, a graphical bug that's occurring. If you simply drag off each of these pieces, they will turn blue appropriately. And I can now group them together, and I end up with my blue stack. All right, guys. There we go. So we've got ourselves our red, our green, our yellow, and our blue tokens that represent our players have visited the long grass area. The next thing I want to take a look at is the creation of our player tokens. And we have a number of different options to do this. Within our objects menu, we've got the option to add a figurine if you want to. This allows you to create a 3D figurine or a 2D figurine. We have the option to create a player pawn if you want to. So if you want to go ahead and, and add a red, a yellow, a blue, and a green pawn, you absolutely can do so. In fact, in the game that I uploaded to the workshop, that's exactly what I did. I think instead I'm going to make some changes to this one that I'm building here, and I'm going to demonstrate how to make stand-up tokens or figurines, 2D figurines for your player player objects. Instead, I'm going to go back, and instead of using the figurine option, which is here, custom is here, or to your custom option, it's also here, your figurine, instead of building a token, I'm going to build a 2D figurine utilizing what I would have done with a token. So I'm going to click, and just like previously, I'm going to add this particular stand-up object to some location. And right there is perfectly fine. When I right-click, once again, I end up with a a pop-up menu that's asking me, how big do you want this? All right. Well, I'm going to change my front image. I've got a number of different starter Pokemon that the players can choose from. All right. I'm going to make, create a figurine for each and every one of those starter Pokemon. So I'm going to scroll down until I find my first one. The first one I have available is my Bulbasaur token. I'm going to click on Bulbasaur and say select, and I'm going to keep it local. I'm going to select the exact same back image. So my Bulbasaur token, I'm going to select, and I'm going to keep it local for me. You guys should be uploading it to your cloud. And if you want to change its size, you can do so. Two times the size or whatever it is you want to do with it. All right, I'm just going to leave it as, well, let me make it two for now. Let's see what happens. I'm going to import this. All right, and there we go. I now have, if I move my board around, I now have a Bulbasaur standing token. All right, I can pick it up and I can place it on the board anywhere I want. All right. Now, if you don't want this, if you find this awkward to look at, if you don't like to look at it like this because the angle is strange, you could absolutely create a token exactly as we did before, and you can use them that way. All right. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head off. I'm going to create all of my starting Pokemon as figurines. All right. I'll be right back.
Okay, guys, there we go. I've got myself all of my starting Pokemon all set and ready to go. They can now be dragged on and placed on the board wherever you'd like them. All right, now remember, if you want to see something up close, Alt will allow you to see these even if they are actual standing figurines, all right? Same with this. I can automatically see the ball no matter how, where it is. All right, so there we go. I'm using the Alt button, and I can make that larger. So there are my starting figurines that I'm going to be using. These are going to represent the players themselves. Now, each player is going to choose a starting Pokemon. And you can set it up so that your players are choosing whichever one they want, and you can toss the rest aside. That's perfectly fine. If you'd like to do that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, what I decided to do in my game, let me just hit spacebar to go back to where we were. In my game, I decided that it was going to be randomized. If you don't want to play that way, if you've downloaded this game, and you, you know, you love Bulbasaur, so you want to be Bulbasaur, that's perfectly fine. Choose it. Instead, I'm going to show you one more mechanic right now before we end this video. If you want someone to be able to pick a randomized object, let's say a randomized token. Let's say you took one of these four and put it in a bag, or you, you wanted them to choose one of these four, or you wanted to choose one of these, these characters here. Uh, there is a method for allowing that kind of blind that blind uh, uh, selection to occur within Tabletop Simulator. So let's take a look at that particular mechanic. I'm going to go to Objects, and I'm going to go back to Components. Now, I want something that's going to allow me to choose without actually seeing what it is I'm choosing. Now, I could search through this entire thing and try and find something that I'm looking for, but I already know I'm looking for a bag. All right. When I come in here, I can either use the infinite bag or just the bag. The bag itself will allow me to put my objects in and pull those objects out. All right. I'm going to choose bag and I'm going to add it to, oops, I'm going to choose bag. I'm going to drag it and add it to my scene somewhere. So there we go. I'm going to add my bag right there. And I can either leave it small or I can make it bigger like I did anything else. My plus sign to make it bigger if you want to make it look more realistic. Now, in order to put my objects into this particular bag, all we have to do is drag and drop them so they're on top of it and let go. And those objects will automatically fall into the bag just like this. There we go. Get in there. Get in there, Cyndaquil. Get in there, Pika. All right. All right. All righty, Totodile. Get in there. All right. So they're all in there. Perfect. Now, if I pull them out, they're going to be pulled out in the order that I put them in. So, like any other object, you can pick up a bag. So I'm going to hold it, pick it up, and if I shake it, if I shake this bag, it is randomizing those objects. When I put it down, I can pull something out. All right, and now they've been randomized. So I have randomized those objects. You can have your players, all four players, or however many are playing, pull those objects out automatically. All right, so if I just drop them back in, and I ran oh, I pulled them out. Get in there. And I randomize the bag by shaking it about, and I pull something out. Hopefully, it's going to be a different order this time. There we go. Awesome. All right, guys. So that's just one more mechanic that we can use. All right. Once your players pull out what they are, they're going to drop off their characters here on the start. Okay? So... If you've decided that you want to create tokens or you want to create figurines for your players, awesome. This is exactly how you do it. If you want to set up a randomized option, there we go. Utilize the bag. Okay, everyone. That kind of takes us to the end of this particular episode. We built ourselves our tokens. We built ourselves our figurines. And we've explored the bag option. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at creating our cards. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down below with a thumbs up. If you didn't, that is perfectly fine. You, there's lots of these videos out there. Watch what you want. Unless you're my students, then you got to watch mine. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.